Good evening everybody and once again welcome back to the video in this video I'll be showing you a complete hands-on lab on how you can leverage clustering in Apache Hodi in an async mode using Delta streamer so in this video I'll be showing you how you can leverage uh, clustering in an async mode this is gonna be part 8 in my video tutorial series part 1 was quickly about how to ingest data from a parquet source part 2 was how to ingest data from a CSV source Part three was how you can use a multi-table Delta streamer. Part four was uh, ingesting data from JDBC sources. Then part five was uh, how to run Delta streamer in a continuous mode. Part six, we learned how to ingest data from a Kafka source. Part seven, we did an amazing project on uh, Postgres, uh, Debesium, Kafka, Schema Registry, and Delta Streamer. And this is going to be part eight. Now, let's learn about clustering and how you can uh, run clustering in an async mode. Let's get started with the hands-on lab, but just a couple of things that I want to cover, right? So when you are developing a streaming application, right, either you're using Delta Streamer or you're ingesting data from a Kafka topic in a continuous mode, right, using Delta Streamer, your goal might be, all right, I want to write data as fast as possible. And when you do that, you may lead into small file issues in, 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 a, in, a, in a data lake. Now think about it, right? Smaller files uh, will help you to write data in a much faster way, but on the same time, if uh, it affects your query performance. So, well, what's the solution? Well, Hoodie offers both inline and async clustering, meaning you can group these smaller files together into a larger parquet files, which will help, uh, you know, uh, for your query performance, right? Again, you can come and read definitely more up on, on Apache Hoodie's website. They have given some very nice example, as you can see, batching small files, clustering um, by sort key. Again, they have all these examples over here. All right, so let's get started with the lab, man. Um, so one couple of things that I wanna cover is this particular setting, hoodie.parquet.small small size, uh, small file limit. Now, what happens when you set that value to either 100 megabytes or zero megabytes? I just want to cover this uh, concept. So, uh, okay, observe over here, you, you have a blue, a green and a red, right? So when, uh, you know, you say, hey, you know, I want to have my target or max file size as 120 megabytes. So the first one has blue one has 20 megabytes, 30 megabytes and 120 megabytes, right? So the next time when a new data comes in, Hoodie will basically try to uh, route, uh, uh, you know, the updates and inserts to the smaller file and basically uh, so that these small files can grow, right? So hopefully that made sense. But what happens when you set that to zero, right? Uh, so what happens? So when you set that to zero, uh, updates will be touching your older file and all the new insert will be routed to a new files. So hopefully that makes sense, right? Now you will say, hey, Samuel, well, why would I even do or uh, why, why would I set it to zero, right? So think about it, right? Uh, you want to basically write as fast as possible, right? So setting up Hoodie Parquet small file size limit to zero can help you to write data as fast as possible, right? And then later you can cluster these smaller files into a larger files, okay? All right, enough of theory, man. I think this is uh, 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 this is enough for the theory part. Uh, let's 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 go into action, right? Okay. So uh, to perform this lab, you will come inside E8 or exercise number eight, okay? And all the materials are given to you. So the first thing that you see is datagen.py. Uh, this is a Python file, which will generate a CSV file in the current working directory after every one second at a very rapid rate, okay? So let's actually make it three, four seconds for now, and then we can uh, reduce this uh, sleep, okay? So what I will do is over here, uh, I'm gonna run this particular Python file. Now you see, right, uh, every five seconds it's gonna generate a CSV file. So if you observe in the folder uh, E8, let me uh, just delete this one. So give me one sec. Uh, let me see why. Oh yeah, now I'm seeing this file. There was a small delay. All right, so here you can see we have some CSV files that are being uploaded in the folder orders and these are like bunch of CSV files. Now, uh, again, new files are arriving constantly and now let's see we can use Delta Streamer in a continuous mode and then let's learn, hey, how can we cluster these small files together, right? So let's, 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 let's go to the Delta Streamer job. Again, this is tutorial number eight, right? So I, I, I'm not gonna be covering the basics, right? Download the jar file, do this, do that. It's it's understood, right? 
So Spark Submit. So let's go over here and I'll probably uh, show you these settings. Again, all these are pretty uh, straightforward, right? Uh, we are on the tutorial number eight. So again, this should make sense uh, now. So uh, again, table type as copy and write, mode as upsort, uh, right? The dedupe key is gonna be timestamp. Uh, we are ingesting so we are ingesting data from a CSV source, and the target is gonna be inside a E8 folder, uh, inside a folder hoodie DB and orders, right? So, and we are running the Delta streamer in a continuous mode. So basically, when I run this, uh, you know, uh, we are, we're gonna ingest the data from that particular folder in a continuous mode into a hoodie transactional data lake. I just wanna cover the settings and then we can cover the async clustering part, which is the main part for the video, right? So hoodie table property, now observe here. Again, this is pretty straightforward. My record key is gonna be order ID. I wanna partition my day, uh, data lake by order date. Uh, this is where uh, I'll be reading the data. So I think I should be changing to E8 over here, okay? My uh, DDoP key is gonna be timestamp. Okay, observe this. Now I'm setting clustering inline to false because I want to do clustering in an async mode. And hence, I'm purposely, you know, I'm purposely setting that to false. Hoodie clustering dot async unable to true. I'm setting that to true so that now I can do async clustering, which I'll show you in a second. Hoodie parquet small file size limit to zero, which means when I, when I set this to zero, all the newer insert will be routed to a newer file, right? This will help me to write data as fast as possible, right? Let me quickly stop this uh, file generation and then I'll again start it if needed. Okay. Uh, and here again, just using some default parameters and I'm using uh, a lock provider, which is uh, in process uh, lock provider. Okay. So now what I want to do is I would want to copy this. Okay. So let's, let's, let's copy. So, oops, let me try to copy this. So it's a little hard here. Okay. All right. So now I have, Hopefully this terminal over here and then terminal over here. Okay, don't worry, I'll, I'll expand. I'll make the font size a little bigger, so don't, don't worry, okay. Okay, now let me, okay, hopefully, uh, is the font size okay now for you? Hopefully, yes, right? So yeah, I'm simply pasting those commands here and this will create my hoodie transactional data lake in the folder E8 or exercise 8, right? So hopefully, makes sense guys, everybody. All right, so let's start this. So now my Delta streamer has started and it's gonna run in a continuous mode. And now what it's gonna do, it's, it's gonna ingest data from my CSV source. So let's start this guy. And let me collapse over here. So again, new files are arriving constantly and my Delta streamer is running in a continuous mode. And it's basically ingesting data into a hoodie transactional data lake as you can see on the top, top over here, okay? So if I probably stop this for now, and I wanna show you. So as you can see, now we can see a folder called HoodieDB, right? So if I do show in Finder, HoodieDB orders, and we have some partitions over here, right? Hopefully that made sense. Okay, so so far so good, right? Now let's see, okay, now I have my hoodie table with another Delta streamer, which is running in a continuous mode. Now how I can, uh, perform clustering, right? So let's take a look at that. That's that's what I want to show. <coughs> Excuse me. Oof. <coughs> Jeez. All right. Now the clustering part. Okay. Spark submit. Okay. Class. We're gonna be using org dot apache dot hoodie dot utilities dot hoodie clustering job. Okay. We're gonna be providing the package. Okay. We're gonna be using three uh, gig of uh, memory. Uh, master as local because I'm running on local lo, lo, uh, my local machine. This is the path to the jar file. I'm using hoodie utility slim bundle dot jar. Now okay. Now I am using schedule and execute. So in clustering, uh, you have the ability to first schedule. Schedule will first identify the files that are eligible for clustering, and then execute of course will execute. But I'm doing both of that together. That is schedule and execute. Okay. But if needed, first you can schedule and then you can execute, or you can do both together. That is schedule and execute. Okay. Base path, uh, the path uh, you know of your transactional data lake, table name. Okay, this is what we need to cover. Okay. So hoodie clustering async unable to true. I am again enabling that to true. 
hoodie clustering async max commit to two which means hey you know after every two commits clustering job could be triggered okay uh hoodie clustering plan strategy target file max bytes so your target file size what's your max bytes this is probably about a gig and the smallest file size limit is 600 megabytes so what we are saying hoodie hey you know grab all these smaller files that you see and then basically uh, uh, combine into these larger files okay hopefully that made sense now observe here hoodie dot clustering dot execution strategy dot class and for this demo we are going to be using spark sort and size execution strategy that's the class name that we're going to use okay now i have added one particular uh, component here so for example right uh, as your data lake grows right you might want to cluster only recent partitions right or you might want to part uh, or you might want to pa cluster partition based on some sort of a pattern so that is why i have taken an example here where we are using a regular expression so anything that matches that pattern that particular partition will be clustered so let me show you that so the way we do that is by following hoodie dot clustering dot plan dot strategy dot partition regex pattern so what i'm saying here is hey match any partition Okay, well, let me try to uh, show you over here. So basically, this is 2023 20, 10, like this. So any partition in the month 10, uh, a month 10, oops, let me make this 10. So any partition with the month 10, uh, you know, group all the smaller files in that and then cluster it. Okay, that's what we are trying to say. Okay. All right, so that made sense. Uh, again, now here we also can provide uh, the sort column. So uh, here I am simply sorting through an order date. Again, uh, you can use uh, multiple columns as well if needed. So again, makes sense, right? So what we are doing is we are saying, hey, I want I want you to go to uh, this part particular partition where the regular expressions are gonna match. Uh, and then what you want to do is hit, take all these small files and then make these bigger files which are better for my query purposes right so all right so hopefully that made sense now i will go before that uh, i wanna i wanna show you a python file which is show clustering.py so when i execute this particular python file as you can see uh, all it does is basically it calls stored procedure call show clustering and I should see nothing because I haven't done clustering right again my delta streamer is still running in a continuous mode as you can see now on the bottom terminal over here okay over here and let me increase the font size hopefully okay so now let me run python oh sorry it's python 3 <coughs> So when I run python3 show clustering.py, I should not see anything because I haven't even triggered the clustering job yet, right? So again, this is showing me all the partition path and the hoodie commits and here you can see I do not have anything, right? Now, remember in our um, clustering job, we have given a regular expression pattern, meaning it will only cluster um, partition that are starting with the year 2023 and the month 12, okay? So you can do that again if needed, right? So now, we will copy the clustering spark job, which is over here. Yeah. Oops. Just trying to copy that. Okay. So that's so the first terminal over uh, above is my uh, what you call uh, my delta streamer, which is operating in a continuous mode. Also, I will start the new files soon. All right. So hopefully you guys can see right now the clustering job will start. So I'm gonna press enter. Now again, my clustering has started in an async mode. So my regular writers can write data as fast as possible. And now in an async mode, I can do clustering. So as you can see over here, uh, it's a little hard to see, but then you see a success here, right? Uh, also now you can look for a file called replace commit in the directory. And that's how you, you also know that the clustering was successful. You can also use stored procedure as well, which I'm gonna show you. So now, Let's run that Python file, python3 show clustering.py, which calls hoodie stored procedure, and it will show me whether the clustering was success or not. And it will also show me which partition did it cluster. 
So as you can see, I now see some uh, records, of course, and I see the clustering was complete. And these are all the involved partition 2023, 20, 10, 28, 2023, 20, 10, 28. As you can see, all these particular 2023, 20, 10, 29. So of course, anything with that particular pattern, it will basically perform the clustering, right? So hopefully it made sense, right? Now, again, you can start your uh, CSV gen generation. Again, so new files are constantly coming in, right? Delta streamer is ingesting data uh, into Hoodie transactional data lake. And now you can also run uh, clustering in an async mode, right? Hopefully that made sense, right? So um, again, uh, let me actually come here again. This works pretty, pretty good, pre pretty well, actually. So let me reduce the frequency. So now these files are being generated at a very, very um, uh, rapid rate, right? And you can see Delta streamer is doing a pretty good job at ingesting that into a uh, whole transaction data like, right? So let me stop this. Right. And now let me come here. I'm going to again execute my clustering job, which will be again in an async mode, right? So again, uh, you have the ability to do that, right? You can run your uh, Delta streamer, which is running in a continuous mode, and then you can do your clustering in an async mode, okay? So now if I say Python 3 show clustering.py, sh again, I should see all the partitions um, that were involved in the clustering, right? So hopefully, as you can see, right, completed, and these were all the partition that were involved in clustering. So I would say strongly try these labs out. This is lab number eight. Uh, I showed you a complete step-by-step -step approach. First step is okay, start your uh, Python data danger py, which will generate CSV file in the current working directory. Start your Delta streamer operating in a continuous mode. In that, we set um, inline clustering to false and async clustering to true. Uh, after that, we had a job uh, where we were doing clustering in an async mode. So, try these out, try all these labs out. Th these are great ways to learn all these concepts, right? Uh, again, now I will leave all the resources in the description section below. I also have some amazing blog uh, that you can read further. Uh, uh, um, so one of the blog is by Shiva Valanarayan on Medium. He has done a fantastic job on uh, on the blog post where explaining clustering in detail, right? And there's also a couple of blog posts by One House which explains clustering again in much detail. And then you can use my hands-on lab, try these out on your local machine to understand the concept in a much better way. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. And if you did find the content useful, please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share your video with your coworkers and colleagues. With that being said, keep smiling, keep programming, and I'll see you in the next uh, exercise uh, videos.